Most of you that are watching this video have probably trained a machine learning model until this point. And if you were like me, you would have been introduced to this field through the simple linear regression model, where you fit a simple linear model by minimizing the mean square error between our prediction and the target labels, and then apply gradient descent to find the point where the error is minimum. Then, when I got to study the next model, the logistic regression model, things change a little bit. First of all, we use the sigmoid function on top of our predictions, which kind of makes sense at the intuitive level since this transforms the output in a Bernoulli probability distribution, thus limiting the range of values our predictions can take and offering a much nicer interpretation for the classification problems. However, the part which didn't really make sense for me, at least not in the beginning, was why we also changed the mean squared error loss function that we used to compute the difference between our predictions and the target labels, replacing it with the binary cross-entropy loss function. Well, this will be the subject of this video, so if you want to find out why, stick with me for the rest of it. Reason number one. The mean squared error assumes a Gaussian prior. By using the MSC loss, we assume that the underlying data has been generated from a normal distribution. While in reality, if our data is classified into two categories, it does not come from a normal distribution, but from a Bernoulli distribution. So we kind of have a mismatch in assumptions here. To better exemplify why that's true, let's imagine that we have some feature X that target values Y, and our predictions Y hat that differ by an unknown error epsilon compared to Y. If we assume that those errors are normally distributed with unknown variance sigma squared, then we can express the probability of obtaining y given x as follows. And by using the maximum likelihood estimation, we can maximize the product of each normal distribution, assuming that the data is iid. So, if we were to express this in mathematical terms, we would have that the maximum likelihood estimation is equal to the product of each individual distribution. And if we were to expand further, we would obtain this. If this looks too complicated to you, trust me, it isn't. All I've done was to use the normal distribution equation. If you want to see where this equation derives from, I've got you covered. And you can find a link in the description to a video where I describe just that. We can further simplify things and take the natural logarithm of those equations. Now, the logarithm of a product is the sum of logarithms, and the logarithm of e to the power of something is equal to the exponent. After all these transformations, we end up with something like this. Also, in this maximum likelihood estimation, we are interested in finding the y hat values that maximize this function. And since the first term in the equation does not depend on the y hat, we can just simply ignore it. In addition, maximizing a function is equivalent to minimizing the negative of that function. And if we apply this operation, we get something that is very close to the mean squared error. To finally obtain the mean squared error loss function, we can again ignore the sigma squared term since it does not depend on y hat and scale everything by 1 over n, the number of examples. And hooray, here we have it, the mean squared error loss function. Also, in a similar way, one can show that by assuming that the error is distributed using a Bernoulli distribution, Again, a more natural selection for binary classification problems. We can obtain the binary cross-entropy loss. However, I won't prove this in this video, since I'm afraid that if I were to do that, this video would become both too math heavy and too long. So, I will just add a link into the description for those of you that are also interested in exploring that proof. Now, let's move to the reason number two of why using MSC for classification may be a bad idea, namely that the mean squared error loss function is non-convex for classification problems. In simple terms, this means that if a binary classification model is trained with MSC loss function using gradient descent, it is not guaranteed to minimize the cost function, and thus we may end up in a bad spot. If you are used to derivatives and the change rule, the mathematical demonstration of this non-convexity is quite simple, so I will try to put it here very briefly in this video. So again, assume that we have the feature x, the target labels pi, 
and the parameters theta. We applied the sigma in function to the theta x and use the mean squared error to compute the loss between these values and our predictions. There are two important notes here that I've done to simplify things. One, I'm going to use the one-dimensional case, and two, I remove the normalizing constant from mean squared error. Those two do not really affect the end result of this proof, but I just want to save myself the pain of deriving multiple dimensions or keeping track of that constant. Having said all that, the convexity of a function can be verified by computing the second derivative and showing that it is greater or equal than zero. But here I will show the opposite, namely that there are cases where the second derivative is less than zero. Let's compute the first derivative. If we apply the chain rule, we obtain that df d theta is equal to df dy hat multiplied by dy hat d theta. And if we were to expand this further, we obtain this. The first term is equal to 2y minus y hat, and the second term is equal to x y hat 1 minus y hat from the derivative of the sigmoid function. Let's also rewrite this so it would be easier for us to compute the second derivative. When we compute the second derivative, we again apply the chain rule and obtain the following for the first term, and again x y hat 1 minus y hat from the sigmoid function derivative. Now, e squared and y hat 1 minus y hat are always positive, so we are left with determining the sign of the first term. To do this, we can take advantage of the fact that y has only two values, 0 and 1. When y equals to 0, we have the following. Remember that y hat is also between 0 and 1, so here we have two cases. When y hat lies in the range 0, 2 over 3, the function h y hat is greater or equal than 0. And when y hat lies between 2 over 3 and 1, the function h y hat is less than 0. This shows that the function is not convex for y equals to 0. When y equals to 1, we obtain the following result, and by factorizing, we get the final form that we are going to use. When y hat lies in the range 0, 1 over 3, the function h y hat is less or equal than 0. And when y hat lies between 1 over 3 and 1, the function h y hat is greater or equal than 0. This also shows that the function is not convex for y equals to 1. In a similar way, it can be shown that the binary cross-entropy loss is convex in this case, but I won't prove it in this video, and I will just include a link in the description to the proof. The third and final argument is that the MSC loss does not penalize misclassifications enough. For instance, if we have a perfect mismatch in our predictions, meaning that our model predicted a positive label with 100% confidence, when the actual label was a negative one, the MSC loss would be equal to 1, while the binary cross entropy would be equal to minus log of 0, which tends to infinity. Thus, when using gradient descent to fit our model, this translates to a steeper gradient and a faster correction of the weights that lead to that error. This was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you did. Share your thoughts in the comments below. And see you next time. Bye-bye.